Rahel, thank you very much for coming. And uh, on behalf of world Jewry, we're very sorry for what happened at Kfaraza and for the loss of many of your friends. Many of them have been taken hostage. Can you tell us, you, you were part of the civil emergency response team on the kibbutz at Kfar Aza. Yeah. Tell us what that is and describe to us the events of October 7th. Okay, I will start with describing my team. It's a team that starts ac uh, activating when we have an emergency uh, si situation in the kibbutz. It can be the missiles like we are used to every, every year, every something, something like this, and it can be even something different, like a fire all around the kibbutz, and you need to evacuate people or uh, you need to this morning start, the, uh, start like everybody else with the missiles, with the alarm of the tseva adom. That was unusual. Never in my life I heard something like this. Something like what you've heard are sirens. The, yeah, the sirens that, for that the continues missiles. for uh, for all, uh, all the time. I mean, usually it's one siren saying Tseva Adom twice maybe, and that and this continue and continue. Mm -hmm. The first uh, phone I'm doing is to the, uh, the head of the um, defend uh, group in the kibbutz. Um, his name is Shachar Zal, and I'm asking what is... Shachar Zal, he, he was murdered. He was murdered. Uh, and I'm asking what is this, and he said, it's a, a huge attack, uh, hide in the shelters. And then we start shoot, uh, hearing the shooting of the guns in, I don't know, everything. And it was in crying of Arabs. Um, you heard them shouting in Arabic yeah, from your them, shelter? From my shelter. After, f I don't know, 10 minutes or something like this, the first day I get the first call uh, on my uh, message in my phone saying, Rachel, uh, mommy and dad are, uh, are killed and I'm under the bed. All the time, oh, and we get call from people, we are wounded, send me help. And we get call, call from people saying, my mother is dead, help, uh, try to do something. And we try everything, and it's going all day alone. We don't get an answer from the army, almost. I, I think the first one came at 11 o'clock and I said, why now? Why now? And I said, it's all over the place. I, I didn't know it. I was busy. You thought the attack was only was, yeah. in Far Aza at first. Yeah, exactly. You had no idea that it was no all idea. over the area. When he told me this, I didn't care. I want them to rescue my community, mm -hmm. my people, people that are losing blood and they are dying, people that are murdered, people that are holding the door of the uh, shelter and saying, we have uh, the Hamas behind the door. Help, my, help me, help me, help me. And I'm quite uh, help. Helpless. I don't know what to do. The army was acting very slowly. The, um, the health force also very slowly. And people are dying. And we all the time hear the shouting. And we hear the um, Hamas around the houses shouting. And we are in this room, locked, no water, and no food, of course. In the, in the dark, because we didn't want to light, uh, I think uh, around six o'clock in the evening, and I, I really don't know, because I'm all the time like this, all the time like this. Um, my daughter and wife said, said, shut up. We have terrorists in the house. At six o'clock in the evening? Uh, yeah, I didn't, I really, I didn't believe them because I didn't hear anything, because I was covering, they covered me with a blanket so I can speak and nobody will hear me. So they were holding the door, they were holding the door, both of them, and I was still like this. And she said to me a few times, shut up, you are shouting, you are shouting. I said, I'm not shouting, I'm not. She said, you are. She pinched, boxed me like this. And, um, but we were lucky because the, the terrorist was not interesting in the, in the, in our, in our, the door of the mamad, of the shelter because I have next to it a window that overlook the, the main road, and it's a safe place. He could shoot everybody there, but it, it, they could not see him. So, so still at six o'clock at night? Yeah, it was a... It the, was uh, still the, the army hadn't arrived yet? The army started to, be, uh, to arrive, but it didn't, they didn't come to us, not at all. Uh -huh. I don't know where they were. I heard they were here, but they were all uh, shut up. And also. Hamas came in and they... they 
positioned themselves yeah. in your window because it was a high. You could you could overlook much of the kibbutz. Uh, much of the main road of the kibbutz, of the internal main road of the kibbutz, where soldiers were moving, where cars were moving, where uh, we heard the tank crossing, and it was a, for them it was, it was very a convenient. strategic place. And we, exactly. And how many of them were there? Um, we we lived only two. Two Hamas. Two Hamas terrorists yeah. Yeah. were in your home. Yeah. Only two. And how long were they there for? Uh, I think for one and a half hour or something like this. Were they shooting? Did you hear them shooting? Uh, yes. We heard them from shooting. From your window? It's from my window. We called the, uh, the army. We tried to pin our location. We called my son that is living in the center of Israel. Also, we managed to pin our location. Oh, he managed to pin our location from outside. I don't know how. And then I think at 8 o'clock in the evening, the army came. And uh, I didn't want to open the door because we had a, we agree on a password that I uh, I published to the old the, the uh, people of the kibbutz for other certain certain they have to say certain certain. Me and the uh, and the chief of the army only knew about it. They didn't tell the soldier. So no mm. soldier did it. So I said, don't open the door. Don't open the door. It's. It's the terrorists, but they said, no, we hear it's Hebrew, it's pure Hebrew, and we hear the name, it's, he it's us, our people. So we opened the door. And Must have been a relief. A relief, a, a relief. I think this is the only time I start crying a little bit, because all the time mm. I was like a robot focusing. But Did we they kill the terrorists who yeah, were in Yeah, they killed the terrorists, and they said, don't look to the left. When we came outside, because oh, the terrorists... Oh, because they had already shot them. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were ready to leave the house just for a few minutes for uh, taking some bread. They said they, we cannot evacuate now because we are fighting all over this, this area. We were there till I think three in the morning. Was the evacuators in the dark, you know, with nothing to... They didn't let me go to the house, take anything. Just, just go, just leave, leave as soon as possible. And we left and then we start hearing all the stories and all the heroic stories of all over. And every day, even now that we are five weeks after, I hear a lot of stories that I don't believe. It's miracles. Can I ask you, what do you, how do you react when you hear the anti-Israel, see the pictures of the anti-Israel protests around the world <clears throat> that people seem to have forgotten what happened to you within a very short amount of time? What, what feelings do you have? Serious, frustrated. Especially for Spain, because they don't, it's like they forgot the story. Like we are uh, the news in the paper, that after three days, we wipe a fish, fish and chip in England with them, and that's it. it we vanish, we fade away, and we are Jewish, so it's anti Semitic for sure. I'm asking all the time did the Hamas send us uh, 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 flyers before telling us we have an attack, please evacuate the children or something? No. Did they open a humanitarian corridor for, to evacuate the, the wounded? No. We are doing all the things like this. Hey, look at us. And I think all the, the ones that are, are against us, let's go to our Gaza. Please go to Gaza and live there and see what is going on, the corruption, the, the abuse of the poor people by the Hamas uh, chief and everything. Please go there. So you yeah. see signs sometimes in the West and on university campuses saying, gays for Palestine. Yeah. So you say, go spend a day if you're yeah, yeah, a, a, a member of the LGBT community. Yeah. Go spend a day in uh, Gaza and hold up a sign, gays for Palestine. Yeah, please do it. Please be my guest. I'm volunteer to give you some water so you, you don't need to drink the, maybe the contaminant uh, water. So please do my, my best. Yeah. Or feminists for Palestine. Or yeah, or everything. Yeah, it's like... Christians for Palestine. They don't really like Christians over there too much either. I'm sure. But really, Kilo, don't be... Like, the whole world is like... Um, it's like they are saint. They are saint. And we are the bad people in it. No, we are not the bad people. And really, most of the people in our kibbutz are left-wing or peaceful people. Or that's a... We wanted the peace with the, uh, with the uh, Palestinian. It was good for us. The chief of the council that was killed also, the head of the council of Fir Lipstein, that he was a very 
he wanted peace and he wanted to help the, Palest uh, the Palestinian. He was thinking a few months before he took us on a tour and he showed us in um, Erez uh, uh, corridor where the pa passage where they're passing. He showed this area will be industrial area. Palestinian will come and walk in the morning and go back. They will earn good money. It's not the the sense that they are work, uh, uh, earning in Gaza if they work. They can live there. They can walk there and be decent people. And you believe that money, if you are decent people, you don't want a uh, uh, war all the time. And then he said, another thing that I'm thinking is um, um, international hospital for the Gaza people that a lot of them cannot be cured in the, in the hospital in Gaza. They are either sending to Israel or dying. So we'll open a uh, hospital there and people uh, and doctors from all over the world that need to do one year of training will come and work there. This is not somebody that want to kill the Arabs. This is somebody that want to live with the Arabs. And we all were with it. A lot of people from our community believe in, in, in this. This should be the way. Is it too early for you to think about going back to Kfar Aza? Have you thought about what you want to do in the short term until Kfar Aza is rebuilt? And do you want to go back yourself? After visiting Kfar Aza for, uh, twice this week, I'm sure I'm going back to Kfar Aza. And even I heard I, my little daughter that she's living in the, for the last 10 years in the north saying, you know, after being there, I think it's home. I think it's home. Um, it's so beautiful in Kfar Aza. It's so peaceful and pastoral and yeah. quiet. And, and green. And green. green. Yeah, and everything, yeah. It was probably, what people told you before, it was 95% uh, of heaven and 5% of hell. But when it's hell, this time it was... Yeah. Yeah, the, the worst uh, thing of, um, of hell, the situation of hell. I say I have a special place in my heart for Kfar Aza because uh, when I was in high school here, uh, we spent, I think, three days or, or two nights in, in Kfar Aza working. Yeah. Um, and then I would come and uh, when I became a rabbi, I would bring delegations to visit Kfar Aza. Chen Kotlin. Yes, and Chen helped us. Uh, she greeted us and showed us around. Yeah. So I tell you, Rachel, when you go back, and rebuild Kfar Aza. When you consecrate the new place, I want to be there. And I want to bring American Jews with me and we'll bless together this uh, great rebuilding project. We will wait for you. Yeah. Not with the red carpet, but with the green and the carpet of the flowers and everything. Thank you very much. And I wish you and all of your friends well. Have a good and peaceful life. Thank you.